My name is Rome, and I help people harmonize their lives. I help to guide them in harmonizing different layers of their life, starting with the physical layer, moving all the way up to the emotional layer, the mental, the spiritual, and then we have the relational and the environmental. And those are, those are the six dimensions of where we essentially like to work. I've worked with a lot of people that have been through very painful experiences. Human trafficking, Navy SEALs, cult survivors, and also just like regular people that have gotten a divorce and haven't been able to heal from it. Or had some sort of childhood trauma that was unresolved through conversation on a leather couch. And I found in the last 15 years of this work that there's an easier way to do it. We were just talking about that idea where you don't have to go back to that place where you got hurt in order to heal the place where you got hurt. Does that make sense? Right, because it's like sometimes we come in and then we're like, oh, well, this happened to me as a child and you start re-traumatizing yourself. Does anybody ever experience, you don't have to raise your hands, but so, is anybody familiar with the nervous system? So, okay, I'm gonna ask questions. So this is gonna be interactive, right? Like I'm not just talking at you, like we're, we're co-creating this experience. Okay, the parasympathetic nervous system, what is that? Anybody, give me some words. Fight or flight, parasympathetic, anybody else? Parasympathetic, parasympathetic. Slow, you said slow, okay, I like slow. It's the other one. Okay, good. Okay, so here are some words to describe it. I like slow. I like slow. Um, slow is a method to get to it. Uh, rest, digest, relax, repair. Those are some words that describe the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system. Anybody? Reaction. Reaction. Raise your hand. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just messing with you. Reaction. Okay, what else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Come on, give me some more words to describe the sympathetic nervous system. You, you can't be wrong. Like, you're not, I'm not grading you. Uh, though she did get a gold star earlier. Jump. Jump, you said? Yeah. Run. Run, okay. What else? What else we got? That's the fight or flight. Fight or flight, okay. So, fight, flight, freeze, cravings, fawn, and cravings. Are you guys familiar with the cravings one? Right? As humans, that's how we deal with things that are uncomfortable. We, we have a binky, right? There's a baby right there. What does the baby do when there's some sort of discomfort, right? Like there's, there's either a boob or there's a tsk, 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 right? And like as humans, we develop a lot of those things too. And as we get older and as we maybe we make more money, we develop better ones. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're, they're, they're given out. Okay, so very simply. You can go back and you can go to therapy and you can send 20 years of therapy and maybe, maybe you'll have some breakthroughs, maybe you'll have some breakdowns. I don't know, right? That's your personal experience. But there's an easier way to do it. All of your life experience gets stored, not just in your memories, but in your physical body. Does that make sense? The physical body, and it's not just negative. This, I'm not just talking about life experiences in the traumatic way, I'm talking about also positive life experiences. They all get trapped in the body. You can tap into those experiences, whether positive or negative. Have you ever noticed that when you think about that traumatic experience, what happens to your breath? What happens to your sweat? What happens to your digestion? What happens to your mind? Okay, but when you start to think, which hopefully some of you uh, might have discovered already, or if you did it, maybe you'll discover it today, that when you think about the other experiences, and when you start to relive the other experiences, your body, your mind, your heart, your spirit, whatever, whatever those layers are, it doesn't see the difference. It doesn't understand the difference whether, whether that's happening right now or that happened in the past. Does that make sense? I'm sure you guys have heard of the studies, possibly, where they took basketball players and they had them shoot basketballs. They had one group shoot basketballs into the hoop. Okay, and then they measured it, against, that, that was one group. They measured it against a group that just imagined shooting basketballs into the hoop. And the third group didn't do shit. 
what happened what happened was the people that were imagining shooting basketballs perfectly into the hoop scored exactly the same, if not higher, than the people that were actually doing it. Does that make sense? So if you have a life experience that's negative, what happens, right? Okay, you had a traumatic experience, whatever it is, you can fill in the blank, right? And you're reliving it every fucking day of your life. And it's not necessary. It's not necessary because that's not going to heal it. That's just like digging that scar deeper. And you can actually get to the point where you become stress resilient. You become, the better word to describe it isn't even stress resilient, it's anti-fragile. Are you guys familiar with that term, anti-fragile? So there's an economist that wrote a book called Anti-Fragile, and the idea is this. What's fragility? Can you give me a word that describes fragility, an image? Huh? Easily broken. Easily broken. Give me an image, image. An egg. Egg? I glass. glass, egg, glass. Okay, fragile. What's the opposite of fragile? Strong. Resilient. Okay. What else? Durable. What else? Hard. Hard. Okay. What else? Foundation. Foundation. Great. Okay. So we have fragile. We have an egg here, and give me give me an example of resilient or brick. strong. A brick. Okay. Anything else? Cast iron. Cast iron. Okay. Even though I've cracked one when I was on the road, I cracked one and then I was, I was cooking and the whole thing, the inside got red because I was living out of the back of my truck. <laughs> Dude, I, my organization in the back of the truck was not the best. Okay, so the opposite of fragile is not resilient. Think about resilient. Like, yeah, you, you're strong, but what happens to the brick when it actually gets broken? That's it, it's done. It's over. Like eventually something happens where you break. Does that make sense? Like an oak tree is really strong, but eventually it can break under enough pressure. So anti-fragile is the actual opposite, which means that you become better through stress. You become better through change. You become better through these life experiences. Okay. I'm going to give you guys as much as I can in these 10, 15, 20 minutes and take it. If you want more, I'm also going to give you guys each a free program that I created online that you can do in seven minutes a day. You can practice these things at home, okay? Um, I, I promised Antonin that I would give it to everybody that invested in him and in, essentially invested in themselves. And I think that it can be a very transformational experience. Now, okay. Sympathetic nervous system, parasympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic, fight or flight. Parasympathetic, rest and digest, okay? You can know where you are at, where your nervous system is functioning by a bunch of symptoms. That's one, right? We can talk about that at some point. But how you're breathing, the style of your breathing. Does that make sense? I'm sure, has anybody here ever done like Wim Hof stuff? Anybody raise your hand? Yeah, Wim Hof stuff, like ice baths. Okay, great. Wim, Wim's a very interesting and funny character. I, I, I love that guy. And here's the thing. That needs to come after the engine that you build for your breathing. Because when you're breathing like this, what are you doing? You're stimulating your sympathetic nervous system. You don't need more of that. Look at the fucking world we live in. You have EMFs everywhere. You have stuff being sprayed on you from the sky. You don't know where your food is coming from. You, there's, there's, so you have to get in charge of your nervous system and turn on the parasympathetic nervous system. Does that make sense? Like that's not giving you more balance. That's taking you out of harmony. But it, it feels good. I'm not saying it doesn't feel good. There's nothing wrong with it. But you have to, 99% of your day, be in a parasympathetic state, or at least 80, right? We'll use the Pareto's principle. So what does that look like? This, all right, can everybody stand up? Everybody stand up, everybody stand up. This is, this is gonna be interactive. When your shoulders go up, that's you stimulating your sympathetic nervous system. Think about every horror movie that you've ever watched when the person is running away from the killer, how are they running? <laughs> and that's what we're doing when we're having a panic attack or an anxiety attack or anything else. You can look at your breath. Okay, so everybody take a breath like this. Oh, great. Okay, one more, one more. There you go. Okay, so make that your last conscious shitty breath that you'll ever take for the rest of your life, okay? 
You can start with your mouth. That's step one. Start with your mouth. You can get a lot more air into your lungs that way and you can control where it's going. It's not the end result. Essentially, we always want to be breathing nasally, okay? That's very important. Does that make sense? Why the nose? The nose has a lot of important functions and, well, it filters your air. You want to filter your air out in this beautiful, beautiful place. Okay. <laughs> So, what does a parasympathetic breath look like? Well, okay, so this, cl clavicular breathing, top of the chest, that we would call zone three. So everybody say zone three. zone three. Okay, remember that. When you're in zone three, you're not gonna last long. For the guys too. When you're in zone three, you're not gonna last long. Okay, same thing, right? Why? Why are you not gonna last long? Because a saber-toothed tiger is chasing you. There's, a, there's something chasing you, and you're, you're just, that's what it feels like. Okay, zone two. This is the zone. I'm going to undress because I need you guys to see this. You see how the rib cage opens? This is zone three. Zone two. Zone one. This is your most relaxed zone. This is the zone that'll help you fall asleep. This is the zone that will start to soothe an anxiety attack. This is the zone that will help you last longer and probably this zone will probably help you last longer in bed. But this zone will get you in bed, okay? <laughs> it's the more relaxed zone. This is, this is what people want to be around. They want to feel that relaxation. It's contagious. When, you, when you're relaxed, when you're harmonious, your environment becomes harmonious. You are the ripple. Yes, exactly. You are the ripple effect for your world. Does that make sense? Like my world is not your world. Does that make sense? Everybody here has their own world. Right now we're communing in one world together, but realistically we all live in different worlds, right? People cross your path. You want to leave them better than you found them. Yes? Kindness, harmony, love. Those things are important. How the fuck are you going to do that if you're running away from a saber-toothed tiger? You can't, you, can't be, you, you can't feel harmony. Why? Because that guy that cut you off, fuck you. Like you're cutting into my space because I don't have enough of it. I don't have time. I don't have energy. I don't have space. That's what you deplete when you breathe like that. Does that make sense? Okay. Zone one. Okay. Zone two. Okay, let's play around with it together, okay? Put your hands on your belly, okay? And we're just gonna breathe, just right into the belly. For the guys, breathe into your balls, breathe into your ass for the ladies, like breathe as low as you can. Think of the diaphragm right here, this is what we're activating. The diaphragm is very important, okay? This is just one diaphragm. Ladies, after you have birth, the other diaphragm gets weak, the pelvic floor. If those of you that have kids, the pelvic floor is an issue sometimes, right? So when this diaphragm, harmonizes, this diaphragm harmonizes with the two. We have a lot of diaphragms in our body. We have one over here as well, one over there. Okay, we have a lot of stuff that's very similar and I wanna point that out. Okay, so let's practice together. Use your mouth for now. Okay, keep going. Okay, everybody breathe out first, breathe out first. Exhale, get rid of everything. And now inhale. Easier? Easier? Always start with the exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. This is what we're going to do now. Do you guys feel like you, you have like that pattern right now? Like, okay. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to bounce gently. Inhale through the nose or the mouth. Just bounce gently. Relax the shoulders. Relax the shoulders. You got to put the arms down. Relax the shoulders and just bounce and breathe. When we inhale, we inhale when we're bouncing. Okay. And the, the moms know, if those of you have kids, what do you do? Right? What, what's different from us? We get to embrace our inner child. Like this is what we're missing as humans to, to heal our nervous system, okay? So now, here's another thing that you can do. You take an inhale, right? Inhale, and now you're gonna hum. Mm -hmm. 
for those of you that have kids on the spectrum or maybe you're on the spectrum, stimming, right? Very similar. Inhale. Mm -hmm. Inhale. Big inhale. There you go. Mm -hmm. the relaxation in your shoulders. Keep humming, keep humming. Mm -hmm. And get that bounce going. It's okay. It's okay to jiggle. It's okay. If you're jiggling, it's okay. Just bounce. Jiggling is okay. There's nothing wrong with a little jiggle. <laughs> it's 2024 for God's sake, right? COVID-20, COVID-30. We're still, we're still figuring it out. It's okay. Inhale. But that's why we're here. Farm to table. Let's jiggle. Mm -hmm. All right, one more time, one more time. All right, now close your eyes while you're humming. Close your eyes while you're humming. If you feel comfortable. If you don't feel comfortable, don't close your eyes. And picture, imagine in your mind the last time you had a good time. Keep bouncing, keep bouncing. Bounce, breathe, hum, and imagine. What did it sound like? What did it sound like the last time you were having a good time? And smile, smile. When you have a good time, usually you smile. You don't have resting bitch face. You, you smile. <laughs> Inhale and hum and imagine. Remember, when was the last time you had a good time? Mm -hmm. Maybe you saw a baby or a puppy. It doesn't have to be anything huge. Or maybe that is huge. Mm -hmm. And when you smile, don't just smile with your, with your mind. Smile with your heart. Smile with your mouth. It's got to start somewhere, but it's got to go somewhere too. Okay, now when you're, when you're done shaking, you can keep shaking, and then what you can do is take your hands, and you can... Just gently pat yourself, okay? There you go. Wow, we got a rhythm going, huh? Holy shit. Harmony. This pelvic area, yeah, inhale. Mm. The hips are moving it. You notice what starts at the feet, goes to the hips, and the hands are just continuing the movement. Mm. Go up to here. When we breathe poorly or dysfunctionally, what happens is our neck and shoulders starts to get neck and shoulders start to get tight. Does anybody ever have tight neck and shoulders? Okay. Lower back and hips. Lower back and hips. Anybody? Yeah. Um, sleep. Hard to fall asleep. Hard to stay asleep. With time. With time. With time, it'll get there. Sometimes you refer to yourself as a night owl even. It's okay. Digestion, any digestion issues? Good. This will help. Keep going. Okay, now we're going to find some rhythm and harmony like we walk, right? Like this, big inhale. And like, it's like we're walking. So we're moving our shoulders and we're moving our hips. The movement is starting at the feet. Inhale. And then you're just walking, right? But the hands are glued to the feet, I mean to the thighs. Notice that the head's not moving. Like you're walking, I don't know, some, some city street in New York. You're just looking straight. You don't want to make eye contact. You definitely don't want to make eye contact over there. Well, well you, you make eye contact. You, you keep looking straight. I know what I'm doing, bro. <laughs> okay, now we're going to swing the arms, right? Find your rhythm. Find your rhythm where everything is connected. Breathe. 
breath work, movement, it's all connected, it's all somatic practice. It all taps us into our most primal body. Our body, our physical body, is the thing that's been around the longest. And everything's just connected to it. That's why we have to start there. It's very hard to start up here. There's almost like a block right here. Big inhale. Does anybody find harmony yet where they feel like it's effortless? Yeah, find that effortless swing. It, it should feel like an infinite swing, like you can do this forever. Your body heals. Do you know what happens when you do this? Your fascia starts to unwind. Your fascia takes 40, 40 minutes to warm up. So this, this is what our ancestors used to do. They used to walk all the time, everywhere. They didn't, they didn't watch videos of other people walking. They actually did it themselves. Okay, back to bouncing, back to bouncing. Inhale. Mm -hmm. time, one more time. Now we're going to take the hands, the back of the hands, we're going to put it behind our back on our kidneys. And as we're jumping, as we're bouncing up and down, we're going to massage our kidneys. The kidneys are responsible for energy. Okay, so we're just massaging the kidneys. Yeah, if you have like animals or chickens or rabbits, just hang out with them and just do this all day. <laughs> For real, like we'll, we'll just be like working and like just moving. Your body wants to move. It wants to unwind. It's unhealthy to be sitting 13 to 15 hours a day. And it's okay if you're doing it, but like get up sometimes and move around. Or at least move your feet like this, like 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 I would at a bar, right? Like my feet don't touch the floor, so I have to kick them like that. <laughs> at least do that, you know? <laughs> Look, some of us are blessed with height, other, others are blessed with other things, right? <laughs> also, learn how to stand properly. That's really important too. When you're breathing and moving, it's important to stand properly. What does that look like? Have you guys ever been around a big dog that's crazy? If your legs are locked, you're going to get dropped. Yeah. So bend your knees a little bit slightly, feet facing forward, maybe slightly out, knees slightly bent, pelvis slightly tucked where you're finding that middle, and just breathe right here. Go. Inhale, and then hum. Mm -hmm. Inhale. Hum. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this also humming is very important for, for a few reasons, right? One, it decalcifies the pineal gland, which is a really important gland in your body that controls a lot of processes in your body. The other thing that it does is creates nitric oxide, which is for the guys out there, Nitric oxide is good stuff. The more nitric oxide, the better. Uh, okay. It, it's, in, it's important for blood flow. It's important for blood flow and, you know, nowadays uh, blood flow is very rare for a lot of people. Like blood flow becomes a problem because the body starts locking up. It creates stagnation, okay? This opens up the stagnation. Does that make sense? Okay, again, one more time. Inhale. Bend the knees. Mm -hmm. Inhale.
You guys keep going. I'm going to talk while I, while I bounce. If you do this, if you can't do seven minutes a day of this, do one minute. Do one minute a day. Start one minute of just doing this throughout the day, especially when you wake up. If you want your nervous system to start healing, it's very important that when you wake up, you don't grab your phone. Second of all, that your phone's not even near you in the room and it's off. Does that make sense? This thing, this thing is terrible for your nervous system. Just saying, it's very unnatural. Like it's very unnatural for us as humans. And if we can learn, and this can teach you how to control and use that as a tool versus letting it use you. Does that make sense? Because you're data. Okay. All right. Big inhale again. And mm, I see resting bitch face coming back. Smile. It's like like bees, like a like a beehive, right? Incredible, incredible. There you go. Find your rhythm. Like find where it's easy to bounce. Mm -hmm. Another thing that you can do if it's hard to activate the belly is you can tilt your pelvis. Now it's easier to breathe into this space. Does that make sense? When you're like this in front of a computer, it's very hard because you have a lot of this kind of pressure going down on your diaphragm. It's very hard for it to expand. Make sense? Yes? Yeah. Okay. Last one, last one. Mm. Okay, the Chinese call this shaking out the sickness. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? I, I, I like, like back and forth also, so it's more interactive. Any questions? No questions. Yep. Any? Certificate. Huh? Are you certified in any way? Or Am I certified? Yeah. In a lot of things. In a lot of things. I'm a black belt at Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I'm a, I'm a practitioner of. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All types of breath work. A lot of different types of breath work. I trained with Wim Hof eight years ago. We climbed the mountain together. Um, I, have, I have a lot of certifications. I would, um, it, it has elements of Qigong, it has elements of yoga, it has elements of Sistema, it has elements that I've uh, synthesized and also created myself. Um, it has en elements of clinical breath work and clinical psychology, neuro-linguistic programming. I mean, it, 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 there's pieces of the greats that we get to stand on the shoulders of that I, I had the benefit and the pleasure of finding when I was in need. Like when I started this journey, I was broken. I was 21 years old and I wanted to commit suicide because I hurt two, two discs in my neck and they wanted to fuse my neck and I couldn't compete anymore. And, and I was in nursing school at the time too and I was finishing up nursing school and I was just seeing how broken the system was and I was like, I don't want anybody to cut into me. So I dropped out of school and went on basically a 16 year adventure, traveling the world, training and practicing with very incredible teachers and gurus and uh, grandmasters and masters in whatever craft that I thought I needed to heal myself. Um, through that, I, I mean, I, I, I needed to fund that journey, so I had to create income through building supplement companies and gyms and nonprofits and just like just learning how to integrate being a human. I guess that that's basically it. Like it harmonizes all the human elements because like, yeah, you might do this, but this part might be 
out of harmony in your life. Does that make sense? And it really starts in the body. It really starts in the body. But yes, there's elements of a lot of the greats. Yes. So I agree with 99.9% of what you're doing and saying, except for the nitric oxide, which I've just recently learned. Mm -hmm. um, that nitric oxide actually increases the aging um, exponentially. And we think of it as good because, of course, that's what we brought up, and I've always believed that as well, introducing like these different things into my body so that my not nitric oxide expands. Um, what I've just recently learned um, is that nitric oxide is actually detrimental to our health. And if we can reduce the nitric oxide in our body, actually it's beneficial in so many different ways. So I would love for you to do a little research in that. Sure. Um, well, you mean nitric oxide that's coming from an external source? Yes. Well, this is, this is your internal source that God gave you to create yourself. And then, and then the, the nitric oxide that creates more of it in your body is what I'm talking mm. about. Well, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not aware. So may, maybe you can send me some of that research. I'd love to read it. Anybody else? Do you have an Instagram or something? Yeah, I do. I do. You can find me on Instagram, romeza, at rome, R-O-M-E-Z-A. And send me a message, and I'll send you a, a discount code where you can get the program for free. It's called the Breath Detox. It's our entry-level program. But it'll give you some things to play around with, seven minutes a day five different uh, rituals that you can do. Um, and you could definitely jumpstart your healing. Yes? I have a question. So you said there's one, two, and three. So do you always want to be breathing? One, two, three. Do you always want to be breathing through one on like a regular basis? No, no. OK, one, when you're relaxing, you're chilling, you're, you're trying to um, learn. Uh, two is action, right? Um, fight, fight. Uh, or create in some way, shape, or form, or um, achieve. Does that make sense? Like entrepreneurial stuff, like, like focus, right? Like focus. Uh, maybe it can be relaxed focus, but in sometimes you need a little bit more than like that super like zen state. Does that make sense? So this, this would be walking, running, playing, dancing, fighting, uh, fucking. Um, does that make sense? So all, all of those things. Yeah, so and then this, stay away from it as much as humanly possible. Like once you're aware of this, of that this is going on, go back to this. Or pace yourself, because it might be hard to go back straight to this. Does that make sense? To go from like, woo, to this. So come here first, and then go down lower. P pacing yourself, uh, just like almost like, Jogging after a sprint. Okay. Anybody else? Nobody? Dude, no. I had the best day with you when I came to visit. Oh. It was one of the most profound, enlightening moments in my life. Without the use of drugs, it was really <laughs> cool. Um, breath work is too incredible, and like anything, it's consistency, and he taught some very, very, very useful tools. Did Thank you. It was incredible. Thank you, bro. I appreciate you. This is just, this, this is what you call like just the tip. Um, send me a message. I'll send you some stuff. If you guys are ever want to come out, we do retreats, we do workshops. So contact me. We'll figure it out. Thank you guys.